Asia was awarded nine Ophir prizes. The Ophir is the equivalent of the Oscars, the Israeli Oscars awards. And it won uh, nine of them this year, including best picture, best actress for Alona Eve, best supporting actress for Shira Haas, and best cinematography for Daniela Nowitz, who actually made history being the first woman to win this award for cinematography um, in the history of the Ophir Awards. And uh, also won awards for best editing, best casting, best original score, production design, and makeup. Uh, the film premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival this year, where Ruthie Freebar took home the Nora Ephron Award, and Daniela Nowitz took uh, home Best Cinematography as well. Shira Haas, unfortunately, is not with us, won Best Actress at that festival, and we just got news today that uh, Shira is nominated for the uh, Spirits Award as well. So congratulations to you all for this remarkable work on this extremely powerful film and to all, uh, for all the awards that you have already received for your work. Thank you. Let me start with you, Ruthie. This is your first film, which is unbelievable. Can you tell me a little bit about the process and uh, how this film made, came to be? I know that uh, you were working on it as part of the Cannes Residency Program. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, um, the film, I started working on it seven years ago. Um, and it, it, it took a while to sort of uh, get the idea of what I wanted into the script. And um, I, it started from a very personal story um, where uh, I was uh, at the time 24 years old and I lost my older sister uh, who was 32 at the time. And it, it was a, a, a life-changing experience for me. But I, what I remember mostly is that during the time that she was in the hospital and I was by her side, I was very detached from the situation and I was unable to really be there for her and really be there for myself as well. I mean, to, to be able to, to fully um, just understand what was going on and, and be there emotionally and physically. Um, and I just, I, I found myself completely detached. And on the other hand, I, I would look at my mother and see how she was so devoted to my sister and was able to, to cry when she felt like she needed to. And at, by, by um, the day that she needed to say goodbye, she was able to do that, which I was not. And this is where um, I brought my story from, the story of Asia, who's a woman that starts off in ways like I was, very detached from the situation uh, where she knows that her daughter is dying. And uh, throughout the film, she acknowledges that and she's able to really be there for her daughter and by the end to be able to say goodbye to her. Um, so this is the, the, like, how I got to the story. And it took a lot of time to understand what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it also because it was so personal to me and, and just because it takes time to write. Um, and the kind of residency program where I spent five months in Paris writing was one of the best um, thing I could do just to be able to sink into the project without any other interference and, and just write. And it was wonderful. It was a very, very strong experience. So would you say that the character of Asia is based on both your experience and your mother's? Like her dramatic arc is basically transferring from your experience to your mother's experience? Um, yeah, in a way. I mean, I took my own uh, experience into the film. Of course, it's not biographical by any means. And um, I'm not a single mother, nor is my mother. Uh, so it's not uh, based on, on actual things that happened, but just on my feelings and the way I looked at things. And I took that into the script and into the film. And can I ask you about the choice to call Asia Asia and to name the film Asia? And for those who don't know, Astia is Asia in, uh, in Hebrew and <laughs> in Russian as well. Yeah, um, the reason I named Asia, uh, Asia, the, the reason I, I chose the name is because I felt it was a very strong name, uh, very connected to the earth, um, very powerful. 
and I wanted her to be that kind of woman. Um, so this is why I picked the name. And the reason I picked the name for the, for the film is because, uh, and, and this is really getting into the story and really getting to, to the final moments of the film. Um, I, I feel like when you end the film, you have this image of Asya in your mind, of this woman that is left alone by the end of the film, and she's going to have to deal with the consequences of what has, has just happened in her life. And I wanted people that watch it to think, okay, the film has ended and, and Vika is gone, but Asya remains there and she'll never cease to be uh, that mother to Vika. As long as she lives, she will be a mother to that girl, even when she's not there. And this is what I wanted people to think of because she's still young. She's 35 years old when we see her in the film. And she still has the rest of her life in front of her and she can still become a mother if she chooses to. So a lot of things come to your mind when you think of that woman who is left um, holding that piece of memory, which is her daughter that is gone. So this is why I chose to name the film after her name, because this is one I want people to think about. I see. And there is this really great notion of uh, in and out and of reflections uh, that I feel is, uh, is with the, I mean, the choice of making the characters uh, uh, immigrants from Russia makes them not uh, a part of, uh, of society, but kind of like shifting in and out of society. And I feel like the fact that they are women do, do, does that as well. And I wanted to talk to Daniela about that because it is very, very present in the cinematography choices of this film. And I wanted to ask you if this is something that you came with or if this is something that, how was that? Yeah, I mean, we spoke a lot in the pre-production about giving a feeling that these women are kind of trapped in their circumstances. I mean, they can't change the situation. They can't make this disease go away, but they can make the best of it in the situation. And so it was really important to us that visually you have these kind of very human, organic, soft forms, these beautiful women, and they're constantly boxed in, framed, you know, with geometric patterns that are very not human, like squares, you know, or, or they're looking outside, but they can't get to the outside. Um, so there's definitely a feeling also being an immigrant, which is that you're kind of stuck in your circumstances. They're living in a tenement neighborhood. She can't afford anything more than this. She can't afford to be with her daughter all the time. Um, but then there's also the idea of kind of the, the, you know, Antonioni did this a lot. He kind of put the human form against kind of the, the thing that overwhelms it or the conflict. And for me, I felt that, you know, being an immigrant, being alone, but also being trapped in this place, in this time and place, you know, these characters are trapped in a time and place. And that's kind of what, you know, we wanted to reflect at the same time though, um, we wanted it to be beautiful because I think that by the end of the film, although it's a difficult film to watch in, in many ways, it's also kind of a happy film to watch because they do find a way to make something beautiful out of these very tragic circumstances. And so for us, it was also important to not just focus on the entrapment, but also on these beautiful faces of these beautiful women who, when you look in their eyes, you forget about all the squares. You just feel hope and inspiration and, um, and happiness in, in their you know, relationship and what their relationship goes through because of these things. So kind of trying to encapsulate all of that. Absolutely, I, I agree that the, the first of all that the, the circumstances uh, are are there before the the disease presents itself, and the feeling of being trapped, and yet the feeling of spirit, and also the fact that um, there is a sense of youth that is um, that is taken away from both characters because of um, Asia's circumstances and because of um, of Vika's uh, illness. Um, you actually are from, I mean, you, your education, your cinematic education, uh, Daniela, is, uh, is from right here in Los Angeles, right? You're yeah. an AFI graduate. Yeah, I've been in LA for almost seven years. I'm an AFI grad and I definitely started my career there and all the first features that I shot, um, although I shot all over the world, they all kind of jump started from Los Angeles, from people I know there, from, you know, connections there. Um, so yeah, I actually, I was a member of Women in Film for a while while I lived there. It's a great organization. So I'm, I'm honored to be on this side of it this time. Amazing. Do you have any uh, projects uh, set up that are um, 
in this uh, area, in this industry in uh, uh, yeah. Los Angeles? I was supposed to be, well, I was supposed to fly out in a week for a location scout for a TV show in Colombia. However, they've closed the airports here. So we're kind of, you know, COVID wise, uh, things are, it's, it's a very tough time to, to be in production. And this production specifically is a TV show where people are coming from all over the world. So it's even tougher, you know, to get the whole thing organized. Um, but yeah, I'm continuing to work. I, I just had a baby. I guess it's not just, oh, not just thank you. <laughs> so I'm finally, you know, as of the last few months, getting back uh, to work and, you know, excited of bringing her along with me to the Colombian jungle. So hopefully we'll all have a great time. And her dad, of course, is going to watch her while I work. Um, so <laughs> Alona. Hello, congratulations on this such, such a powerful performance. I can't even begin. It's, uh, it's amazing to me that I read that you are a director by your own right. And the fact is that you actually transitioned uh, to uh, acting at a later stage, um, okay. which is incredible to me because I would just say, I would tell you, you're a star. So <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about uh, your, uh, your, your way? Uh, yeah, maybe because it was started, uh, you know, I start my life in the family that was completely in uh, engineering, uh, you know, technical knowledges, mathematics, physics. So it was really my way started somewhere, somewhere there. I really learned in university, mathematics, you know, so I was really till very late age completely sure that that is my way. Um, but uh, yeah, actually, during this uh, studying in university, my love to cinema became so picky. <laughs> so I just, I just left everything and uh, went to to learn to learn cinema. I checked a lot of schools, including Moscow and uh, Berlin. I remember London, something like this. And uh, but after all, I decided to stay in Israel, where I already lived, where I'm living, and. Um, so just went to the cinema school and it was really one of my happiest years, I think, in my life because I felt that I found something that I really, really want to be in. And actually during the direct, this uh, directing study, I, you know, one of the courses was actually about how to work with actors and uh, Maybe there I was one of the very intensive participators <laughs> because most of the scenes a lot of people really enjoyed to do with me and uh, I really enjoyed to, to help them and uh, my teachers really, really, really sang me all the time. This, that's the way that you have to talk, that's completely yours. And, uh, so, you know, after I finished this cinema school and went to Tel Aviv, so only, I think only close to my 30, I really started to um, you know, uh, go to some agency and started my work. So, um, and uh, I have to say, it's really very close to. A, I, I think just after one or two years later, after I started, to, when I'm brought into agency, I really received my first uh, role. And uh, now it just till then it just uh, <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> I really feel really great. And, uh, to be in front of camera, I really enjoy to see all the processes behind the camera. Um, I think it's also, it really helps me as an actor, my knowledge as a filmmaker, actually just to feel comfortable during the shooting, I don't know, because I really understand what is happening around me, what is happening, and it really helps to concentrate on something that uh, it's important for the role, for the scene. And can you tell me how, how did you how did you nail how did you land this role? Um, actually, it also uh, found me when I you know, my the first audition that I received it was exactly uh, two two weeks after my uh, giving my second birth <laughs> when my daughter oh, wow. and uh, it was so much about motherhood and it was so much about uh, something new for me that I started, started to learn and to, to search, to ask myself. I, I know, I believe that everyone who, who became mother really started to understand about their self a lot of new things and a lot of uh, processes that we're going through our lives. And, uh, so it's, uh, in this way, it was really a movie of, a kind of present for me because it was completely in the 
synchronized <laughs> with what I'm uh, thinking about. You know, in, in some way, yeah, as an actor, I really love uh, some difficult uh, stuff to work with. You know, it's, I really enjoy the mm -hmm. very um, contrast scenes that completely show some completely different sides of the person. And, uh, um, what is your favorite scene in the movie? Oh, difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> You'll tell me yours, I'll tell you mine. Uh, Rupi, I, I noticed that um, a lot of the, the moments of um, closeness and tenderness between uh, the character of Asya and the character of Vika um, have to do with childhood memories. So whenever they connect, they talk about the way it was when Vika was, uh, was very young. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about that choice? Um, I think there's something that early childhood that is very, the, the, interac the interaction between a, a mother and a daughter is somehow much easier. Uh, this is from my experience as a daughter, I'd say, because there are no um, real conflicts and um, there's, there's this tenderness that, is, uh, that has no boundaries and, and this kind of love and you really hug your child when they're when they're very very young it's, it's like even the, the way you touch them is it's very different than when you're a grown-up um and when you're a teenager which is even worse i would say and i think there's something about um Asya's memories and vika as well that this is the time where they were just it was just the two of them and they were very close and uh as they got as as vika got older i think she looks at her mother and she knows um because of her situation, she knows she's never going to become that woman. She's never going to uh, mature to be to be that uh, very confident woman that knows what she wants. She's not. She's never going to be that. And when Asya looks at Vika, she feels the same. She, she knows that um, she's not going to see her grow up and become that adult and that person that she can she can be proud of uh, the way all parents want. So this is a, a very unbearable situation for both of them. And, and looking back on a childhood is it's just full of hope. And I think that's what they're looking for. They're, they're looking for that hope in their lives. So they go back. Um, and it's just about finding the moments where they can, they were at the same, feeling the same for one another. Ruthie, I wanted to ask you about the male characters in this film, which I found um, for me very heartwarming. The fact that the male characters in this film are very tender. Most of them are very, uh, tender and understanding and uh, you see a lot in um in women in wi women's films um a lot of anger towards um towards the male characters in in the film and uh, this is not the case here so i wanted to ask you a little bit about how you wrote those uh, male characters and the dynamics between the characters i think as a writer i, I guess as a person i just try to see the good in people um, and, and I think you can feel that in the film that even for Stas, for, for the married doctor that has the affair with Asya, and also for, for Roy, the, the guy that he likes, they're not mean. They, they might be misguided. They might be, he's a teenager, so he doesn't exactly know how to deal with things. Uh, and, and for Stas, he, he wants Asya, but he's, he's, he's stuck in this situation. So I really, uh, try to write characters that I feel empathy for. And uh, some characters are more developed than others, so I feel more empathy for them. Uh, so that's when we talk about Gabi, which is the, I think the third um, biggest character in the film. I wanted him to be someone that Asya and Vika will want to let into their home. Um, because it, at the end of the day, she's leaving him to care for her daughter. She's not going to leave some guy that she can't trust. And I really wanted him to be that sort of person that has these qualities of a, of, of, of a caregiver, um, but also to be someone that Vika could be attracted to, that could be um, the, the, where her desire goes. And this is why I chose, and, and it's, I have to say, it was one of the most challenging casting calls we had because we were looking for a man that would hold all these uh, characteristics and it was very difficult to find and I think Tamir was a, just a wonderful 
wonderful um, casting choice because he brought in this gentleness and still like he's he's very manly and he still but he knows how to be so gentle and subtle and and full of empathy and love and uh, I um, there's uh, something that always comes to my mind when I think of Tamir and the way we cast him he hasn't been he doesn't have a, a lot of experience with when he came to the film he was only um, he was once in one set of a, of a TV series and he was he was very uh, inexperienced and still once he came into the room I just felt like it was Gabi and I could not um, resist like uh, imagining him in that role and, and I remember he came and he um, had this huge tattoo on his arm and um, my casting director asked him what's that tattoo and he said oh that's a lotus flower I love flowers oh. and I thought to myself wow a man that can say like that enter a room and just say I love flowers that's that was so incredible and <laughs> um, after deciding it was going to be him and, and knowing that he's going to be Gabby I just um, I took that lime into his character because I felt like it suits it suits him so well in the film. Are there any other examples like that of uh, things we saw in the film that were brought by the um, actors? Uh, I'm them? sure there are. I can't really think of specific lines, but yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, for me, it was very easy to do that because, okay, um, I, I can give another example from him because uh, um, I, I wasn't... Uh, it wasn't like the part was written for, for an Arab Israeli. Um, he was written just as, as a, you know, I, I didn't give that much thought to um, what kind of, uh, like where he came from. But when we decided he was gonna be the casting, we didn't want to ignore the fact that he was Arab because he has uh, an accent. And it also, it made a lot of sense for him to be Arab because there's so many Arab um, male nurses. Okay. Uh, in Jerusalem. So um, I asked him, and the, the role was named Gabi, and I asked him, uh, do you know, like, is, is Gabi an Arab name? And he said, no. It's, uh, 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 and he said, yeah, it's, it can be an Arab name. I said, yeah, really? And he said, yeah, it's short for Jabba. And then it, it also <laughs> made its way into the film. I'm not much of an, an improvisation and not into that in the film, but I really like changing the script according to the actors uh, during rehearsals. So we did a lot of that. I don't know uh, if Alona remembers specific lines that we changed, but there are definitely things that we have done according. Maybe all the <laughs> translation process that we made together, you know, yeah. all, the, the, all the Russian sentences, because it's really, you know, maybe every sentence you can say in some other different way, intonation, what you want to, a dialect like this and uh, so it was really we made it together so it was really something that's very suitable and logical for me and for for my interpretation of the role so Elena did you think of a scene that is uh, one of your favorites by now um you know it's maybe sounds uh, masochistic but I I really love the last scene <laughs> I can tell you why <laughs> Uh, maybe no, because my because Asia and uh, Vika they really most of the movie we there is no no one we can see them together one in front of another they all the time looks uh, no it became closer 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 but uh, they're still speaking most of the time um, you know looking some, somewhere outside not not to each other eyes and uh, only in this last scene we really really. It was really eye-changing, and, uh, and uh, yeah, it was really strong experience uh, of, uh, yeah. <laughs> for both of yes. us. I'm sure. Daniela, do you have a favorite scene or one that comes to mind that you want to? Um, I mean, I guess I'm I'm more kind of if I it, let me say for example, my favorite scene for the photography because it culminates kind of everything the movie is going towards is the scene where Asia wakes up in the middle of the night and we yeah. hear off screen Vika kind of coughing and choking and we see her and we see half a frame, we see the city, the other half we see her run into her room and suddenly we're in the hospital and we're walking behind her and she's telling this beautiful story and 
I guess, wow, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about that scene, but I guess the reason I love that scene so much as a cinematographer also, because it's kind of this moment that culminates everything that, that we did there, which is we didn't make an ultra realistic film. We made something that at times even has like a touch of magic realism to it. Even if everything that happens is realistic, the tone of the movie is, is almost like a story you remember from your childhood, or there's a certain sense of nostalgia to the, to the film. Um, and I love that moment because it's kind of, it, it puts you outside of yourself for a minute. And it feels like Asia's had to go outside of herself in order to overcome this huge thing. And that maybe that moment is kind of the moment of transition also in the film where finally things, you know, begin to reach the relationship starts to, to get closer and uh, more intimate. And so for me, visually, I just love when the visuals reflect perfectly what's happening in the story. Um, and there's okay. amazing scenes for acting and I'm, I'm just not concentrating on that because I'm coming from my kind of visual sense, but I love that scene for the visuals. I think it says so much with so few shots. I mean, those are two shots basically that cut together, so. All right. Uh, for, for me, I promise I will tell you mine. <laughs> so for me, it's the scene where uh, the, the refrigerator stops working and uh, yeah. the stench of, I guess it was it's cucumbers there. I don't know what it is <laughs> that Asya uh, shoves in Vika's face and they, and they playfully play around with the idea of uh, rotting away basically, which has the whole film in this, uh, in this scene and the triumph of, um, of living um, is with embracing um, all of its um, stages. So um, I want to thank you all again for joining us for this conversation. And I want to wish you the best of luck during this uh, award season. Thank you, everybody who thank joined you. in. Thank you so much, Women in Film, for including Asia in this, uh, in this uh, series. Uh, stay safe, everybody.